Hello viewers and welcome to my new video. In today's video, I would like to talk to you about contracts, music contracts and agreements, okay? And why it is very, very important to have these things in place before you begin any project or you start collaborating with other people, etc. etc. What actually inspired me to make this video today is one of my clients and of course i'm going to keep client confidentiality and discretion so i'm not going to reveal any personal or unique details however in my music consultancy service that i deliver to people uh, i have had somebody who has gone into some problems due to the fact that they were effectively co-writing a song with another person or, or other people even and even though they actually did have a kind of an agreement in a written agreement in place that agreement did not actually cover splits so how how much percentage would effectively apply to each co-writer in terms of publishing royalties okay so this is but this is an issue, okay? Because uh, further down the line, for example, if your song starts doing well and you didn't agree on those splits, then of course this can become a bone of contention because uh, if other people then feel more entitled, for example, you know, you may have an interpretation of the situation in a way that you might be thinking, okay, well, my contribution i feel that i've say i don't know contributed like 70 percent of work into this particular composition or into this particular song whilst other person on the other side might not agree with that they might actually believe oh no it was like a 50 50 split equal split and we both worked together on sort of on this project and on the outcome which is basically a song or a composition similarly when you are in a band, a very good idea would be to actually have a band agreement. And why I'm saying this is because various things can happen during the lifetime of a band. For example, there's things like songwriting. So who's actually writing the songs, okay? Sometimes people leave bands, sometimes there are disagreements. In fact, quite often this, this tends to happen. And, you know, if there's nothing in place, then kind of you're on kind of uncertain grounds because you're not sure, you know, can I still be using that? You know, so, so for example, I don't know, someone else wrote majority of the songs that that person has now left. What, what is actually going to happen now? Uh, and actually, interestingly enough, very uh, fairly recently, I was actually invited to a band rehearsal myself and um, just to try out if I might be interested in, sort of joining this band as a guitar player and it actually transpired during a conversation that the main songwriter the key songwriter who was like the founder of the band actually left and now the rest of the band uh, couldn't sort of use his songs anymore and they re sort of wrote new songs by themselves which i find i actually find quite a fair approach anyway uh, it's just an interesting thing because I think the problem might occur when a band becomes relatively known and it builds a following. In this particular case, I don't think that was the case. But for example, if the band was much bigger than that and they developed that following and then they want to carry on, one person leaves, what happens to those songs? You know, what happens in terms of any compensation, you know, financial compensations, including royalties and things like that. And it's also sort of some of these agreements can cover also what exactly that what happens you know when people leave when people join you know and and all the organization of uh, how things are going to be again split for example when it comes to songwriting you know who is considered a songwriter in the band how 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 are these publishing royalties going to be split etc etc again the same thing can apply to a situation when you might be a session musician for example and you've or a featured artist even maybe you've been asked you know uh, would you like to do something for me as a session musician and it's like well it would be good to have something in writing you know maybe agree on your fee 
uh, and then you should be then obviously uh, appropriately compensated as sort of agreed in that contract or in that agreement. Now, I know for a fact, and again, these are these examples that many people out there fail to do this because, you know, when people put bands together or when people just kind of want to make music, that's really their goal. And often, oftentimes they do not fully grasp or understand the sort of business side of things. And it's only right later on when they sort of wake up and think, oh my goodness me, you know, like I didn't do this. I forgot to do that. There's nothing in writing. We never agreed on anything. To some people, this may also feel a bit, little bit awkward, of course, because, you know, if you just a, a bunch of friends who decided to kind of put a band together, for example, and you play together, it's like, oh, it sounds a bit awkward. You know, I'm just going to pull out a contract now and like sign this contract or this agreement. But I can assure you that this will have value so it's better to get it done sooner rather than later and then sort of get it out of the way uh, and then you can concentrate on making music and all the fun of it now i've got a little bit of a recommendation for those of you who are small independent artists in terms of how you could go about this because you know like not everybody is a lawyer or not everybody understands like the legislation so well that they could say for example write such an agreement by themselves but luckily uh, there is a there is some help out there and there's actually some free help out there as well uh, with this so if you are based in the UK uh, and I think you could probably actually also use this for other countries as well but I'm just you know this is in the UK so I'm just talking from that perspective uh, so we have musicians union Okay, and Musicians Union, even if you are not a member of the actual union, they have plenty of aids uh, and helpful gu guidelines, guidances, things like that on their website that people can use, read, download. Sort of, it, it sort of brings more understanding of the whole music business uh, information so when you go on the website and you type in search if you type contracts it would act, it will actually take you to various templates they actually have templates that you can actually download for free and use with whatever work you might be doing as a musician so for example they have session recording contracts they have arranger and copy standard contracts they have like co-writing contracts all these different things where all those splits are also kind of agreed within those contracts so there's quite a lot of things available for free on that website so i would encourage you all to actually visit that and and have a look at it because not all of us have plenty of money for example to be spending on lawyers you know to help us write construct these contracts especially if what you're doing isn't you know that big but you know you still want to protect yourself you still just want to agree you know like okay this is what we're going to do and these are the rules and this is how we're going to split any royalties that you know come out of that project for example later on and i think that's only fair so i hope that this video today has brought you some useful knowledge and that will help you in the future in if you haven't done this up to this point then you know i like i said i would encourage you to start doing that for the for your future uh, musical endeavors uh, uh, so thanks very much for watching today uh, leave me a comment if you've got anything to add or to say about this video or you have any questions and i will see you in my next video